In this video, we'll be walking through the process of adding Verify Lens to your Android app. Verify Lens is the intelligent camera technology that powers Verify mobile apps to allow users to quickly snap a photo of their receipts, bills or invoices to extract structured data from their financial documents. Verify Lens is powered by machine vision and AI to automatically detect and crop documents from the camera or image gallery and perform geometric distortion and other corrections. This results in a clean image that can be stored for future use and also allows Verify to accurately extract and enrich data contained in the document. Before we get started, you will need to make sure you already have an active Verify API subscription as well as a subscription to the Verify Lens SDK for Android. You can sign up for a free trial of the Verify API by going to verify.com, clicking free trial at the top here, then selecting the OCR API option and filling out the form. To subscribe to the Verify Lens SDK for Android, contact sales at verify.com. Once your subscriptions are active, navigate to the Lens SDK for Android documentation page for instructions on using Lens in your Android app. The first thing you will need to do is download the Lens SDK. Follow this link, then scroll down to the Android section and download the SDK using this button. You can also download the source code for a demo app here to review an example implementation of the SDK. With the SDK downloaded, open the project in Android Studio and drag the SDK into your project's libs folder. Next, open your app's build.gradle and make sure it contains at least the options outlined in the docs here. You'll need to make sure that your min SDK version is set to 21 or higher and that your ABI filters are set to the supported architectures. Next, set your TensorFlow Lite options as per the documentation and enable Java 1.8 compatibility if your min SDK version is set below 28. The final change here is the list of dependencies. Add these dependencies here and then make sure the Lens SDK version is set correctly. In my case, I dropped version 1.4.1 of the SDK into my project, so I'll update the version here to 1.4.1. To make sure that your locally embedded dependencies are found in the libs folder, open your project's top-level build.gradle file and add this flat directory repository. Now it's time to configure your Lens implementation. A good place to do this is in your project's main application subclass. We'll start by adding all the required imports. Next, you will need to configure your Verify credentials. We'll create an instance of the Verify Lens credentials class and populate it with all the required credentials. When copying this block into your project, make sure you replace these placeholder credentials with your real ones. You can get your assigned credentials by going back to the online documentation and following this link. The next step defines the settings to be used by Lens. We'll initiate the Verify Lens Settings class and define a few example settings. You can find the full list of available settings along with their descriptions here. For now, I'll just use the example settings to get up and running quickly. Now that we've defined our credentials and settings, we'll pass them over to Lens using the configure method, which accepts your application class instance, your verify Lens credentials, and your verify Lens settings. We've now finished the main setup pieces, so it's time to actually put Lens to work. Verify Lens provides four ways of collecting documents. The most common way is through the camera experience. Here, users will point their phone's camera towards a document, Verify will track and highlight the document in real time, and then once the user has taken the photo, Lens will automatically crop, correct, and enhance the image, ready for submitting for processing. To launch the camera experience, we would simply call this show camera function. The next collection method is the image gallery. Users can select an existing photo from their phone's gallery and submit it for data extraction. This collection method can be performed independently from the camera experience by calling the show gallery method. Another method is dictation. This allows a user to either use voice dictation or manually type a transaction's details and have Verify transform those details into structured data that is supplemented with a computer-generated document image. 
This collection method can be launched directly using the show dictation method. And finally, Verify can process income and expenses that are submitted via email. Calling the show email method displays information to the user on how to process their documents via email, including what address should be used. These last three methods can all be launched directly and independently, but they're also all accessible through the camera experiences user interface. For the purposes of this video, we'll only look at the primary method, that being the lens camera experience. I'm going to copy this show camera function call and paste it into my floating action button listener. Now, since we're dealing with a different file here, I'll need to make sure that I still have the relevant imports. In this case, all I need is the main Verify Lens class. At this point, my app is ready to launch the Verify Lens camera when I tap the floating button. But there's one last piece left to take care of, and that is the ability to find out from Lens what the user actually did in the camera session and what the outcome was. The current preferred way of doing this is through the use of delegates. We can define our custom delegate by calling the setDelegate method. In this delegate, we define four functions to handle the different types of events that can be raised by Lens. Each of these functions receive as an input parameter a JSON object containing more information about the raised event. Verify Lens Close is called whenever the Lens camera is closed, regardless of whether anything was submitted by the user or not. If session scan count is zero, the user cancelled out of the camera without submitting anything, otherwise the value here represents how many different documents were submitted during the camera session. The queue count here represents how many documents are currently in the queue for processing as of the last camera close event. Verify Lens update is fired for a few reasons. When a document is submitted for processing, whether via the camera, image gallery or dictation, this event is raised with a status of start. The event is again raised to announce the path on the device to the original image that was submitted by the user, and again with the path to the generated thumbnail for that image. It is then raised several more times with upload and extraction progress updates, and then finally with a status of removed once processing has completed and the document has been removed from the queue and related files removed from the device. Verify Lens error is called whenever either an error occurred during processing a document or when an exception or crash was caught in the SDK. The status here will be either error or exception respectively and the associated message or stack trace will be included. And finally, Verify Lens success is called upon successful processing and data extraction on the submitted document. Here in the data field you will find the JSON response containing the results of the data extraction process. For the purposes of this video, I will copy this basic delegate definition, which simply logs all activity to the debug console. Of course, in your case, you will need to handle these events in a way that is meaningful to your users. But right now, we should have everything we need to run a very basic demo, so let's take this app for a quick test drive. I tied the show camera function call to this floating button, so let's launch the lens camera by tapping on it. I won't dive into the image gallery or the settings etc in this video, but let's take a quick look at what happens when I submit a photo with the camera. By looking at the logcat, we can see that Lens fired off the camera close event, as well as the upload start. It gave us the paths to the original and thumbnail images. Then we have a few upload percentage updates, the data extraction success event, and finally, we were notified that the document has been removed from the processing queue. The most important of all these events is the extraction success, at which point we can see all the structured data that was pulled from the submitted image. Hopefully, this is enough to get you started with your Lens SDK implementation in your own Android app. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, reach out to us at support at verify.com.